Serving with passion. Hello and welcome to this edition of Namraka Channel, where the focus is more on tax, customs and excise matters. I'm your host, Shipena Jambiko Hanga, and I'm delighted to be in your company for the next half an hour or so. In today's episode, Namra takes service to the Windhoek Agricultural and Livestock Show. The staff engagement survey finds engaged workforce. All that and more coming up shortly. <music> NAMRA participated in the Windhoek Agricultural and Livestock Show from the 27th of September to the 5th of October 2024, delivering essential tax and custom services to visitors. Now, while providing its services, NAMRA achieved a significant milestone by winning the prestigious Gold Award for the Best Indoor Exhibition 2024 focusing its commitment to excellence when it comes to public engagements. as well as the values, because I experienced that first hand and um, I just came back to tell you guys you did a great job and I'm really really happy that, you know we always complain about the system and the government and the people in the system, but, but this time around I could really see that the system is put in place with the right people, the right quality of people, of service and um, one can just see the change, sense the change and the fact that what you call the uh, tax and amnesty or whatever, I mean, I owed you guys, and you guys are willing to take some, you know, chop it, and I pay the rest. And uh, what more could one ask for? So, I'm happy client, I'm happy customer. Namra <laughs> commissioned a staff engagement survey in August 2024 to gauge its level of engagement across its operations. Twafika Consulting recently released the survey's outcome with an 80% participation rate from a staff complement of 1,508 and an impressive overall engagement rate of 76%. Opportunity for growth that's up there, then ability to manage and colleagues' knowledge and skills. So, once again, it speaks to skills development, all of that. Um, what's very healthy is your working relationship with colleagues, understanding of your job requirements, the meaningfulness of work. I think this is one that sometimes people, um, we over, um, we, we don't, under, we, we, we sometimes shun away that it means so much, right? It gives people purpose and sense of purpose and belonging to be part of the NAMRA um, family, if I can call it that. So, uh, so, so the board is happy, uh, the minister is happy, uh, but we will never become complacent uh, because we will never become complacent. Internal communication, communication also of the bad news, including those who are suspended, uh, salary issues, uh, career growth and so on, we can never be complacent and we are not yet over 30% of where we want to be. Thank you very much, but uh, I'm not surprised because we're getting this feedback in the society from yeah. different angles and also international. International, they, 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 there are people who are just following number on our platform now because it's a great source of inspiration according to them, not me. <laughs> Thank you. 
After the break, we'll be joined by Ms. Clarissa Kanesis, the Principal Tax Officer within the Central Region at NAMRA. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Joining us in the studio is Ms. Clarissa Kanesis, the Principal Tax Officer for the Central Region. Clarissa, it's an honor to have you join us today and welcome to NAMRA Kacheno. Thank you for inviting me, Shipe. I'm thrilled to be here. Amazing. Now, let's start off this session with a brief introduction of yourself. Tell us who Clarissa Kanazes is. Okay. So my name is Clarissa Lucretia Lunei Kanazes. Tongue tie in um, I hail from the mighty Karas region. <clears throat> I'm a mixed breed. Um, I'm half Nama and half Orlam. So one part, uh, my mother is from Falharas and my father is from Betani. Um, uh, from the Friedrichs family, so I'm, I'm a royal child. No? Um, uh, secondly, I'm the eldest of three siblings. Um, I'm the NAMRA team manager for netball. I'm a fun-loving person. I love sports because you are, you are allowed to just have your adrenaline and you are allowed to scream at the sports field. So, so I love that because it's, it's a way of... of um, releasing some of all the life stresses you have, you know. And lastly, I have a very loud voice. So sometimes it's, it's, it's mistaken for being confrontational, but um, I'm actually just a very humble person that, that um, has compassion and empathy for, for my neighbor. That's, that's who Clarissa is in a nutshell. Thank you so much. Now we understand that you've recently transitioned from the back to the Venduk Regional Office from the transfer pricing section at the large taxpayers unit. Please tell us how this transition has been for you. It has been challenging. Um, I started as the principal tax officer on the 1st of September and I've been a transfer pricing auditor since last year, August. Okay, in, in, in NAMRA, but in the old dispensation of IRD, I have also been a transfer pricing auditor. It is quite challenging because the volume of taxpayers that you work with within the regional operations is the magnitude is, is quite high versus the LTO taxpayers with which we only concentrate on in transfer pricing, you only concentrate on multinational enterprises, which are probably a fourth or half of, of the LTO taxpayers who are around 900 or 1,000. So it's, it's, it's quite challenging. And... <laughs> My emails are flooding. Sure. People are emailing me constantly because you are dealing with agitated taxpayers on a daily basis. So you need to be crisis managing the whole day. And it seemed in the beginning, especially the first two, uh, two weeks, it seemed as if I, I cannot find time to just, to just live out my work plan. But luckily, within the third week, it, um, things became streamlined type of, and we were able to, or I was able to, to maneuver um, um, a thing of starting earlier than the others and finishing a bit later than the others. Thank you so much, Clarissa. Now, with that said, what are the key aspects of your role and day-to-day -day responsibility as a principal tax officer for refund verification and audits? So basically, I'm entrusted with the responsibility to ensure that refunds are paid out within the stipulated time as per our service charter. And I'm also in, um, interested with the role to, to ensure that quality audits are conducted. If quality audits are not conducted, um, our value of integrity and, and efficiency and will be null and void, you understand? So basically that's, that's the responsibility. Secondly, I'm also interested with training this, these auditors because you would want people to be doing the same thing in all the regions. The, the information that the one auditor has, the other auditor should also have. Um, the knowledge that the one auditor has, the other auditor should also have. So I'm also entrusted with the, with the responsibility to be a trainer for, for the auditors and the refund verification officers. Amazing. Now currently our taxpayers are really going on about the refund process <clears throat> taking place within the 90 days. A lot of them are going on about that, saying that uh, is there no way NAMRA can actually relook into this just to shorten the period for this refund verification and pay out of the refunds now? So the issue with the refund verifications, 
we need to ensure whether it's a correct refund that is being paid out. So we have a self-assessment tax system, and because we have a self-assessment tax system, we, we are obligated to educate taxpayers in terms of what is correct according to the tax laws and what is incorrect. So for us to increase the voluntary compliance, we need to be examining these refund verifications. You wouldn't want a taxpayer to have get a refund today and after three, five years, you you are called back. No, you definitely. were not supposed to get that yeah, refund definitely. in the first place. So yes, we, we want to increase our voluntary compliance. And based on that, it's necessary that in, in the meantime, we do the refund verifications and the audits of the taxpayers. Within the 90 days now? Within the 90 days, <laughs> we try. Yeah. Now, what are some of the strategies that you will implement just to basically ensure efficiency in these areas? So basically, I, I want us, or we have started to become data-driven because um, if you don't have the data, data doesn't lie, firstly. Um, if you don't have the data, you will not be able to um, have a work plan structure, a proper work plan. You'll not be able to prioritize resources and all of that. So firstly, we have started with pulling all the data. What needs to be done? What is halfway? What should still come? And based on that, there's a, there's a solution for that. Firstly, NAMRA is, is, is establishing a unit, a compliance risk management unit. And that unit will assist us a great deal in reducing the audit inventory. That's, that's great news. Secondly, I would want to, with the data, I would want to prioritize resource allocation. Because currently, the, the human resource we have versus the taxpayers or number of taxpayers that need to be audited is, is it seems almost impossible to finish within the 90 days. So basically, that's, that's the strategy that, that I'm looking at. Now, what are, some, what are some of the main challenges that you are encountering within your section and how do you plan to address them? The major, major challenge is that the volume of taxpayers versus the human resource. That, that ratio is off the chain. For instance, looking at the current audit inventory, one audit officer within the central region operations is supposed to be auditing 2,500 audit cases per month sure. for us to conclude all of the audits. And we're not even talking about the, the returns that are, still being, that are still supposed to be submitted. We're only talking about the current inventory that we have. Sure. So th that's the major challenge. And the way we can overcome the challenge is to, to establish, implement, and or operationalize the, the compliance um, risk management unit. And secondly, prioritizing of these resources. Okay, thank you so much. Now, do you think that there is a need for realignment when it comes to the departments now, how they are structured and how we can actually expedite the refund process now? The, uh, the two departments is in audit and refund verification? Yeah. <coughs> yes, we can. We can because an audit, in my understanding, I would want us to pay out the refunds, everyone's okay. refund, mm -hmm. educate vigorously. So if these taxpayers are educated vigorously, we, we are able to um, use one of the, one of the main uh, intentions of the compliance risk, uh, management unit where we refund all the taxpayers and then we are able to allocate more resources to audit. Because if you examine these taxpayers' um, records constantly and you have the resource to examine them constantly, you will be able to have more efficient, mm -hmm. um, a more efficient way of educating <coughs> them and showing them what should be done and what should not be done. Mm -hmm. So basically, let's pay out the refunds and make everyone smile. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, from what you just said now, I can see that you're really involved in various projects, uh, especially when it comes to taxpayer education. Please tell us uh, what drives you to take on so many responsibilities at the same time and uh, how do you constantly uh, um, deliver excellence result? Unfortunately, it does infringe on my personal time. But you know, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. Sure. So, so... Uh, you would be, you would be happy to spend an hour more on doing what you want to get done. Yeah. Because what drives me, the motivation is actually the satisfaction of the clients. You would want someone that you assisted to know what you are talking about. Definitely. You would want the person to be satisfied whether he has to pay or whether he's getting a refund or not. Yeah. So the the fact that he's educated, he's more empowered, and based on that, that satisfaction is, 
it, it, it doesn't even come close to the personal time being infringed on. It's, it, that's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Clarissa, any final thoughts that you would like to share with our viewers just before we close off? Firstly, I would like to encourage our taxpayers to strive to become and remain compliant with the tax laws. Secondly, I would like to also encourage them to attend taxpayer education sessions. Thirdly, the tax amnesty program ends on the 31st of October 2024. Just a reminder. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Indeed, we wish you continued success in your role. Thank you so much, Ipe. Now that was Ms. Clarissa Karnasas, Principal Tax Officer within the Central Region. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. Now let's turn our attention on the benefits of keeping the tax account up to date and submitting the correct documents. Good day everyone. My name is Anna Edward, a Senior Tax Officer in the Namibia Revenue Agency. Today, we are going to highlight the importance of having your taxpayer account up to date. What do we mean by having your taxpayer account up to date? By that we mean you need to provide us with your latest details in regards to your registration information, your tax returns, as well as your payments. Why is each of these details important to be up to date is because your registration information includes your banking details, your registration names, your taxpayer types and your taxpayer categories, your contact information like email address, postal address, and all de these details need to be current at each point in time whenever anything changes about your business or yourself. For instance, updating your current email on your taxpayer account will help us to communicate to you in a timely manner to give you updates regarding new regulations, what is due on your account, and any action that you might need to take. Having your banking account details up to date also enable us to refund any credits that may become due to you at any given point without having setbacks or delays. Uh, updating your names, let me say in instances of um, change of marital status, will have the correct details and should you come to us needing any printout of a good standing, it will then be printed on the correct name without any delay. For instance, having your returns updated in a timely manner will avoid delays if you are to approach the Namibia Revenue Agency in search of a good standing or a clearance certificate. We have had instances whereby someone is in need of a tax clearance which is already due. However, uh, the revenue agency could not issue that clearance certificate instantly because the returns were outstanding. And this will cause a delay. Having your payments up to date also gives you the same benefit of avoiding unnecessary delays, having your refunds due to you paid in time. So payments should be done in accordance with the correct assessments that you as a taxpayer has um, declared. Paying the correct amounts also have a benefit of avoiding unnecessary late payment penalties and interest that are charged thereon. Another importance of having your payments and tax returns updated in a timely manner in a, and with the correct documentation enables the revenue agency to work out your assessments without any further delay or without attracting or trigger unnecessary audits 
For instance, if you are submitting a return for a company and then you miss to attach the tax calculations and the necessary financial statements will then put a halt on your audits because will, the NAMRA revenue agency will have to pause and contact you to bring forth the required documents in order to complete the assessment, which, could, which you could easily avoid by attaching accurate documents thereon. Another scenario is having provided all the necessary documentations. Um, for instance, if you have changes in um, retirement annuities, perhaps you took out an additional retirement annuity or you have an additional study policy for a child, by providing these documents and attaching it correctly when you are submitting your returns, will then um, increase your tax benefit because all these two are allowable deductions which lessen your tax burden. In conclusion, I would like to highlight that keeping your tax payer account up to date is entirely your obligation as a taxpayer. And this has been made easier because most of these changes you can now them you can now do them via your ITAS portal account without having to come to the office. You only have to ensure that you have attached the correct documents. And importantly, updating your taxpayer account enhances tax benefits and it also enhances efficiency because now should you need anything urgent from the Namibia Revenue Agency, you'll obtain it without any delay. Thank you. In our next segment, we'll focus on the referencing of EFT payments. Good day, I'm Caroline Houses and I'm from the Tech Systems and Customer Service Unit, also known as ITAS. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you through on how to do EFT referencing. The taxpayer reference number is used to reference payments made to the Bank of Namibia from taxpayers. There are two accounts, main account, which is 165001, and the VAT account, which is 165060. The TRN populates upon successful submission of a tax return as illustrated on screen. Or alternatively, taxpayers may visit the NAMRA website, select ITAS portal, scroll all the way down to bank details, and click on the reference details link. Then proceed to fill relevant fields to get a correct reference number. The taxpayer reference number, also known as the TRN, comprises five parameters, which are payment type, offers of registration or return offers, the tax identification number, tax type, and the tax period. Now let's look at these parameters in detail. Parameter 1 represents the method used to make the tax payment, which is EFT in this scenario. All payment references must commence with a 1. Enter a 1 digit in the reference field, which will always be a 1. Parameter 2, Office of Registration Code. This code represents the office where the taxpayer is registered. On the table presented, identify the correct registration office and enter the two digits. In this example, the regional office is head office of which the value is two zeros. Parameter three, the tax identification number. This is the team as registered at the NAMRA Domestic Tax Department. Enter the eight digit TIN in the reference field. In the scenario, the TIN is 04952996. Parameter 4. Identify the correct tax type code that is being paid in the table presented and enter the corresponding two-digit value in the reference field. In this example, the tax type is income tax, which is value 11. There are two, tax, two types of tax payments tax account payment and tax period payments. 
for tax type 11, which is income tax and all other tax types. As seen on the table on screen, it is imperative to enter the correct two-digit value for the relevant payment type, be it tax account or tax period. Parameter 5. This field represents the tax period for which the payment is made. Different tax types have different tax periods. For tax account payment, the tax period will be 9999. For tax period payment, it will be current year and month. For income tax payment, the tax period will be current year plus two digit tax period value. In this example, we are using tax period payment, which is 2025-00. For a broader understanding, you may go under the ITAS Download Center, click Others and select the tax payments brochure. Next, we'll take you through the documents needed for refund on temporary imports. Good day, my name is Wanda Shisho, a custom and excise officer at Wanda Water Post in Katima Mulilo. Today, I'm going to do a presentation on customs refund or claim requirement on temporary importation focusing on IM5 and EX3. We have two types of customs refund or claim which are provisional payment and drawback. Our focus is on provisional payment. Provisional payment is money paid to customs upon importation of goods on a temporary basis. This money serves as a guarantee that if this goods is exported back in the same condition, then the money will be refunded to the client. However, there are grounds for launching provisional payment on temporary importation of goods, for example, temporary importation for repair, temporary importation for exhibition or promotion, temporary importation to re-export in the same condition. We have a list of documents required for provisional payment, refund or claim. You need to complete an NA70, which is an application to make provisional payment. You need to provide your IM5. IM5 is a custom document that used to record goods that enter the country on temporary basis. You attach the payment receipt for the IM5. You attach assessment notice for the IM5. You attach the release order for your IM5 and commercial invoice or packing list. All these uh, documents you got them upon importation of goods in the country and then you need to complete an NA 71 which is an application for refund for provisional payment you need to attach your EX3 EX3 is a customs document that used to request goods for re-exportation goods that are being exported out of the country you need to provide the release order for the EX3 the extension letter, if any extension was given, exit note, voucher of correction where applicable, and uh, you need to provide bank confirmation letter, original bank confirmation letter. You need to provide your client ID, your ID, or certified, certified copy of ID or passport. You need to provide uh, application from application form from Bank of Namibia, which is a vendor application form, an account confirmation letter from the client confirming his or her bank detail with his or her address on it. This is, actually, this is just a, conf a confirmation, a written confirmation by the client to confirm all these things. It's just a declaration. You do it yourself. Please note all these documents all these customs documents must be original. If any case if this document were lost or misplaced, duplicate must be restamped at the respective offices where IM5 was launched, where the temporary importation took place. Failure to adhere to the above requirement, no endorsement for refund will be processed. And I thank you. Here is the trivia of duties.
did you know? Who can be considered a large taxpayer in Namibia? Large taxpayers are based on the threshold of an annual turnover of 75 million or more. Regardless of the turnover, all mining companies will be classified as large taxpayers. Large taxpayers contribute more revenue in terms of domestic tax collection. Serving with passion. Clear your tax debt with Namra's Tax Amnesty Program before 31 October 2024. Get 100% write off on penalties and interest after paying your capital tax arrears. All you need to do is register as an e filer on the ITAS portal, file all your returns online, pay your capital tax amount, and register. Of the tax amnesty program this is your last chance don't wait until 31 october visit your nearest number office or check our social media platforms for more information act now do you need to make a payment for tax debt well here are the available options for payment my name is angela kamu senior revenue treasury officer at namwa I'm going to take you through the process of making payments to our number of offices. We have four modes of payments which are acceptable at our offices, which are direct deposits, cash payments, electronic fund transfers, and speed points machines. When making electronic fund transfers, we have two accounts available for our taxpayers, which is a receiver of revenue, account 165001, and uh, the VAT dedicated account 165060. When making a direct deposit, our taxpayers need to fill this deposit slip at their commercial bank. You need to have your TIN with you. The TIN consists of eight, eight characters, and then you should also know the period that you are making the payment for. When making an electronic fund transfer for your penalty or interest liability due to NAMRA, you use the EFT referencing example as shown on the screen. It also has 19 characters, but on the text type and text period, you put 99999, indicating that the payment is account payment. When making electronic fund transfers, EFT referencing example is shown on the screen, which comprises of 19 characters. The taxpayer reference number comprises of five parameters, which are as follows. 
one, represent the payment method in this case EFT payment. O6, office of registration or your return office. The eight character represents your tax identification number. One four is tax type in this case employee's tax. 2018-06 is the tax period for which the payment is meant for. The question for the last episode was, what are the procedures to be followed for currency declaration? Kindly see the answer as displayed on the screen. The question for this episode is, what are the documents needed for refund on temporary import? I am 5, extension 1. Kindly email your answer to namrakachenu at namra.org.na. The duty for submission is 24th of November 2024. We will announce the winner in our next episode. And with that, we read this edition of Namraka Channel. We trust that the information shared has been both valuable and insightful. Join us again in two weeks' time for the latest updates. But until then, stay informed and compliant. Goodbye. Namra, Namra. Serving with passion.